If you're a small business or even a mid-sized business and you're still sharing files from your personal OneDrive, you're definitely doing it wrong. In this video, I'll show you how to set up a shared file system using SharePoint for your company. By the end of this tutorial, you'll have a shared file system within SharePoint. You can access it from your personal OneDrive. You'll have a shared database located in OneNote. You'll also get a group email and a shared calendar. And optionally, you can also set this all up in the Teams app to access all the files. My name is Bogdan Shperny, founder of Apex One Tech. All this content is free for you. All I ask is that you smash the like button and subscribe. All right, so this is for those who don't have SharePoint set up yet, or maybe it's set up in a really bad way. I'll lay out a good structure for you if you have a small business or a mid-sized business. And also if you're you know, sharing files from your OneDrive. So by default, you probably have just your own personal OneDrive and you have a personal notebook set up within OneDrive. And if you ever just want to access your Microsoft 365 quickly, just type in office.com that gets you there. So if you go to office.com with your account, with your work accounts, right, you can go to OneDrive. So let's go there and then click on my files. So these are my personal files that I have. And as you can tell though, I actually do have a couple of SharePoint shared folders within my OneDrive here. These are essentially shortcuts. And if you have already used OneNote, then you will have a folder like this called Notebooks. So this is where Microsoft stores your personal notebook. So you can click this to open it, or you can go here and open OneNote, but you'll see your personal notebook, right? Not any shared notebooks. If you want to share anything from here, you have to specifically just share it with one person at a time. Before we get deep into the tutorial, there's a couple things you want to think about and decide. So this is a SharePoint site, which is what we're going to create. And then under documents, this is kind of the file structure. So what you're looking at here is a structure set up where everyone will access this one SharePoint. Everyone within the company just accesses all the shared files. And then what you can do here is like maybe for marketing, for example, you can then control the permissions per folder and everything else nested within that folder, right? So you give access here in members, who's a member, who's an owner there for the whole site, for all the files in it, and also for the shared notebook, which is right here. Okay, so you can do that. For larger companies, you would really want to break down or make a site like this per department. And even for a small business, you know, you, you probably want to have a company site like this or company shared file folder system like this where everyone can access the general information and all the operating stuff. But then you probably want to have at least something separated for finance or HR and maybe for your IT department or just, you know, someone who handles that kind of admin things. So that probably puts you at, at least three SharePoint sites. For, again, a larger business, you will break it down further by other departments that you may have, like marketing and engineering, design, finance, all those kind of things. And the last thing you want to consider is whether or not you want to have this all accessible within the Teams app. And if you need, you know, for that particular department, for them to have a specific channel or place in Teams where they can chat. All right. So, for example, the site that I showed you here for this business, right, they just have one overarching site, all the shared files. And if you create this as a Teams group, it automatically creates this one general channel where everyone can post and chat, right? You can write a message on here, which becomes like its own thread, right? Just test and this is test. And it just pops up like this for everyone. People can continue in this thread that's here or start a new post. And what you'll notice is that for each channel that you have within a group or a SharePoint site like this, is you can also access files and notes, which is your OneNote, and the site specific to that channel. So it's a little bit different than the SharePoint location here. This is kind of a higher level, and then general and all channels are nested within this SharePoint site. So as you see here, if you click into documents, you'll see these are channels. By default, it just has this general channel, but also in your overall document library, which is this inside library, you'll notice this is the same thing. This general folder is actually this same channel folder. So you could set this up if you want to do teams that you place all your folders within certain channels. Otherwise, you just make everything on that general website, that general SharePoint site. So now that you saw an example of this, let's go ahead into 
admin center and we'll create one from there. So we'll create a new SharePoint site. We're just in admin.microsoft.com. We'll want to click here to show all and find SharePoints. So this takes us to the SharePoint admin center and we want to click on under sites, click active sites. Under active sites, we'll click create. And you don't want a communication site, you want to go ahead and click on team site, which is not the same thing as creating a Microsoft Teams channel or group, okay? This is just uh, the first step here. So select standard team and click use template. So site name, again, in this example, we're just making a company-wide file system here. So I'm just going to call it the, you know, you can either call it like all company or just call it your company name. So in my case, this will be Apex One Tech. So you could say here, you know, all company files or all companies, fine. Okay, group email address, it just follows along. Now the site address it uses, so this first part of the website is the company that you signed up under when you made Microsoft 365. And you can actually change this, um, and maybe I'll link this video below or up on the screen if you want to change that. And then it goes SharePoint.com sites, and all your sites, your groups are actually created like this. So group owner, right, your IT, your owners go here, and just click next. So, and just quickly, owners are the ones that can change permissions. So if there's anyone on your team who needs to do that, you go ahead and add them as a group owner. So by default, this is a great option. Keep this private as in no one can join unless they're explicitly added to this group, which is really what this is creating, or this site. Uh, there's kind of many terms for this. Now, just one thing to know here maybe is that you see it's checking if this is available. If it's not, you know, it means you already made a group like this. So just change that, maybe even name it number two or something like that, okay? Let's go next and create site. So members, I'm just going to add myself for now. And now you'll see here on the third way down, the URL of our sites, teams. So we do not have teams enabled here and everything else about the sites. Now, if we do want to make it a Teams group accessible through the Teams app, we want to go ahead, you can just click on this. And right here, they're really trying to push this, uh, but you know, only do this if you really need to have those functions. So we're going to go ahead and click Add Teams to make this a Teams group. And just like it says here, there's also a, just like there's a SharePoint Admin Center, there's also a Teams Admin Center too control more details of this group. But for now, we don't need to go there. Okay, so we have this now SharePoint group and also a Teams group. You can click View Site here, or if you were back here, just go ahead and click on this, and that will take you to that uh, new SharePoint site that you made. So it gives you some info here. Yes, we probably want to add members right away, but let me just show you how to do that here. So for now, as you saw, I'm the only member. It also shows that I'm the owner. Right, I can add more. Obviously, there needs to be at least one owner. So let's go ahead, add a team member, and we can select if he's an owner. He'll just be a member for now. Click Save, and there we go. And you can add the rest of your team like that. Now, where are our shared files? It's here under Documents. So again, though, because we made a Teams group from the SharePoint site, it also has this channels, and you see it made this general folder here as well. But we can populate this now with any folder, right? We can make new folders here and drag other files that we might have elsewhere into our shared file system here now. And how do we use this or how do we access this shared file system? So it belongs or lives here in SharePoint. And again, if you go to just office.com and into this menu at the top left, you'll see SharePoint. And this will give you all your sites here. So it will navigate just the same way. But you know, you might be already used to OneDrive. So if we go into OneDrive and into my files, right, you probably just want to access all the team files or the whole file system directly from your OneDrive. And to do so, let's go back to the shared file system here in SharePoint. And then here in this menu, it might be here on top or just click these three dots. And we want to click add shortcut to OneDrive. Okay, so it's adding the shortcuts. And it's giving you actually a link now. You can go back to your one files in OneDrive, but we have it here. Okay, so now in OneDrive, you'll see right here, it just added this as a shortcut. So if we click into it, we obviously don't have anything here except general, but that's it right there. Now we can rename this, 
right? To we don't need to say as documents. We can just name this as you know th that, or you can rename it to whatever you want. It won't change the actual name of the site. You can change the color if you need to, uh, just so it stands out a little bit better. And there it is. Now I showed you how to do permissions in SharePoint, right? You can go here and control the membership or permissions here for the overall site. So for all the files in SharePoint. And if you want to control further down, right, let's say, right, so here, for example, if we wanted to, right, in the SharePoint site, you can add members and owners here. And again, owners in general is just the person who can control the permissions for certain files in your shared file system. So we can also go to the Microsoft Admin Center and here under Teams and Groups, go to Active Teams and Groups. You'll find the one that you made. So here it is, Apex One Tech. So let's just click into it. And here under Membership, we have the same options of, of adding owners and members and even site visitors, maybe basically users external to your business if for some reason you set up maybe this for a project. And now this is right here is pretty important. So one thing you'll most likely want to change right away is external file sharing. So right now it said that new and existing guests, so any file contained on this SharePoint site can only be shared, you know, internally obviously, but cannot end guests, but cannot be shared to anyone. Meaning like you want to just share a link to a file, you can't do that right now. So that's the setting by default. So if you do want to share files, maybe with clients, right, things like that, you know, you write reports, you create a PDF, you want to share a link to that PDF just to that one file, you'll probably want to enable this as anyone. So this allows you, again, to share any of the files or specifically, right, a certain file with anyone. So I will go ahead and enable that. Now, if you do want to use that group email to actually email people outside your company, you need to select this. Again, I would now recommend this for a group email. There's shared inbox, which I can show you how to do that. It's probably a video in the description below. And then if there are group emails sent, you can select whether the members get it straight in their inbox or not. So if you do that, they'll get them in their inbox. Now, the other thing, right this email address does show up in groups in outlook you can also just disable that from even showing there at all so if you don't want to use the group calendar shared feature just select this so in my case i don't want to email anyone outside the team and file sharing is enabled for everyone and that's all so i'll save this and finally what about that shared notebook so if we go to sharepoint it technically already exists, but I guess not real until you click into it. So here on that SharePoint site, we go to Notebook. Now it's taking us to OneNote and it's creating the notebook. So here it is. There's, there's nothing made here. It's just an untitled section. We can rename this and just say, you know, maybe general. And, you know, this is a good place. Maybe you have some, a certain procedure on how to do something, right? So this is the title that notes and you can write here whatever you want, add additional pages things like that, okay? So this is your shared no notebook, and everyone who has access to that SharePoint site has access to this notebook as well. Your personal notebook still exists here as well, right? So this is the one, the shared notebook. If you click on it, you'll see all the other ones that you may have, and for you, they'll probably just be the one called My Notebook, okay? Your personal notebook in there. So that's how you can switch between them. Okay, and like I mentioned in the beginning, there's also a shared calendar and email created for this group automatically. So you can navigate here to Outlook on the web. And now here under groups, you should see it pop up here. So I have quite a bit that I'm testing, so let's click more. And there it is, Apex One Tech. There's probably nothing in here. Just a generic email so that's saying welcome to the group, okay? So just FYI, you don't really want to use this email to share or to send external emails, right, to outside of your company. So if you're maybe making a SharePoint site for finance or billing, for example, you actually want to make a shared email, right, or a shared inbox, not a group email. That's not really what this is for. But it is useful. I mean, you also can have a shared calendar with it. If you don't need to email anyone outside of this, you can use this here as a shared calendar, maybe a company-wide calendar, right, some kind of events, things like that. So here, if you click show all, and again, under groups, let's click show more. 
we have this one, you just need to enable it, Apex One Tech, and now we have that. So when you cr create things, you can also, when you create a new event, instead of just creating it under your own personal email or your own personal calendar, you see here, because you have it enabled, you can now create one for the entire group. And finally, let's check out Teams. So here we go, right? We add this and automatically, there's our SharePoint site and our Teams group, Apex One Tech. And of course, it created a channel called General. So this is these channels are very similar if you ever use Slack. You know, you can make different channels, maybe for different projects. I wouldn't necessarily recommend making it for different departments, or you could if you're a very small business, if you want to kind of manage chat like that. Because really, if you have really small business, you know, maybe five employees, you can just use the chat feature in the chat. You can add different people uh, into one chat. So you don't really need to do that. This is just for kind of like company-wide posts and maybe something easy for them to refer to. And maybe the last thing you want to know is how to use this from within your native file explorer on Windows or in Finder on a Mac. So as you see here in my OneDrive, I have this new site, new SharePoint site that was created and I can easily access the files here and drag things as needed. So I'll probably have a video on the screen or in the description on how to do this for both Mac or PC. Again, if you have any questions or if this helped you out, please like the video, subscribe. Uh, that's how I know that it was helpful to you. And that's what helps me put out more free content for you. Any questions in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Take care.